Hey guys, my name is Boris. I'm a physician assistant. Today I have a very, very special guest, Dr. Ketelbuttle. How do you say that? Ketelbuttle. I butchered it with my American accent. <laughs> but what makes this guy very special is he's actually a physician. He's trained in India and he's making his way over to becoming an MD, a medical doctor in the United States. So today we're going to be talking about exactly how to do that and Ketul's journey and uh, yeah, for those of you who might be interested in that topic. So, Ketul. Yeah, I keep trying to call you Ketul, but it's Ketul. <laughs> yes, Ketul. You, you got it right. Uh, I'm doing my best. <laughs> All right, so Ketul, you're a doctor from India. Yeah. Why did you decide to become a doctor in the United States? So there's a pretty long uh, conversation. I would say a family conversation. So uh, I, it wasn't decided until my final year of my med school. So my mom and dad, they traveled Europe. Mm -hmm. and they saw the healthcare facility, the infrastructure, and the way the healthcare works there. They were very impressed. My, actually, my dad had the th thought that I would, like, he wanted me, that I come uh, to, like, I go somewhere in Europe or US mm -hmm. and get my further fellowship degree. Okay. So he wanted me to explore these options. So after com completing my med school, I thought, like, okay, what are the options which I see? Uh, so I didn't want to do surgery. I wanted to, I, I, like I'm more of a medicine person, so I thought like let's go with uh, US MLE, let's uh, explore this option. Sure. So I started preparing for my US MLE exams and basically I don't, uh, I wanted to do a fellowship here in the US, and particularly in cardiology. cardiology. So yeah, so to do that you have to do a medicine degree here in the US mm -hmm. and that's the way it goes. So I started preparing for my exams and here we are today. Okay, so basically, you said your parents traveled through Europe, yes, and they wanted you to practice medicine in Europe. Yeah, yes, in U.S. or Europe, or also oh, the U.S. or Europe, not India. Uh, so it is not like that, uh, not India. Like I, I always have a option. That's my home country, and I would like to like basically ever in future, I would like to go back and uh, disseminate my knowledge or disseminate my uh, e like experience to to the people of my country, but like to. As I said, my education is like one of the key thing in my family. They always try to like be on the front end, front end or the yeah. leading edge of getting like the best education as you can. Sure. So my mom and dad they wanted me to get my MD degree or the fellowship degree from here. Mm -hmm. So I I give a thought and while I'm doing my rotations, like I have done at least five and a half months of rotations here in the US till now. Mm -hmm. So I think. Uh, from my experience here, I think I would like to do it, do it here, like do my fellowship and MD here. So you're getting your MD in India? Uh, so no, so that's that's the degree which we get in India after completion of med school is called the MBBS, which is basically Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery. That, oh. That's called as MBBS. MBBS. Yes. So that's the degree you have. Yes. And you're completing MD, MD here. here. So after taking two of your USMLE steps and getting certified by the ECFMG, that's the Education Commission for Foreign Medical Graduate, because I'm a foreign national for US. Yeah. So I'm a foreign medical graduate here. Mm -hmm. So after you get your ECFMG certificate, your MBBS degree is equivalent to MD degree for the US. So my degree, I can say I am an MD here. Okay. I have taken my step three, so that is more valid. Like I have taken all the exams which are required to practice independently here in the US. After step three, you can practice independently here in the US, provided that you are affiliated to a hospital or you are working with some physician who is uh, like working here already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you get your MBBS. Yes. And that is the equivalent of a MD or a DO here in the US. Yes. But then but in order to practice in the US, you still have to do step one, step, step two, two, and step three. Step two. Yes, you got it. Okay. Got it. Yeah. And then you're eligible, of course, for fellowships here in the US. Yes, yes. But okay. for fellowships, you, you need to go through the residency program. After completing your residency, you can go with the fellowships like uh, internal medicine. After doing that, you can go for cardiology, infectious disease, rheumatology, immunology. Sure. There are a lot of fellowships available, so you can go with either of them. Yeah, I think I skipped a step. So you got your MD now. Yeah. You need to do residency. Yes. I think that's what I meant. I mix the two up: fellowship and residency. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. That sounds good. Got you. And so coming back to the original question, why did you decide to pursue residency yeah. training here in the United States? So, uh, the ultimate goal for me is to do a fellowship here in the US mm -hmm. and to do that I have to do a residency here in the US so mm -hmm. my ultimate goal is to do a fellowship mm -hmm. and that's the way I can like do via my residency here mm -hmm. in the US. so why is just because of the education I can like 
uh, we all know that US is on the bleeding edge of uh, innovation in medicine. They have the best healthcare system, best infrastructure. My country, they are like they have the best physicians. I would say they have the uh, one of the most renowned or the best physicians. I have trained under them and I know them. But uh, I would like to improve or like enhance on my existing knowledge here, and I'll just uh, disseminate away back in my home. Oh, okay. So your main uh, motivation for becoming an MD here, taking step one, step two, step three, yes. going through residency, is to get a fellowship here. Yes. Because you think that that's going to be the best education you can get yes. for cardiology. Yes. Okay. Understood. I didn't know that. <laughs> I actually didn't know any of that, so I'm hoping that that's educational for you folks. Yeah. Uh, so basically, if you do have a, uh, a bachelor's of medicine and surgery, be MBBS. MBBS from India, it's a bachelor's degree in India, but it's it's comparable to an MD or a yes. DO here in the United States, yes. which makes you then eligible for uh, for residency and fellowship yeah. in the United States once you've passed step the one, steps. step two, and step, step three, three. Yeah. USMLE. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So that's something I didn't know, so thank you for that. Oh, you're most welcome. <laughs> and so now that we know why you decided to train in the United States mm -hmm. after already training in India, yeah. uh, I'm going to take a follow-on question to that. Why did you decide to become a doctor in general? So. There was a family dream. I'm, I'm a first generation doctor in my family, mm. so. Congratulations, that's awesome. Oh, thank you very much. So yeah. that's a, al always a special feeling you have. My, my dad, he, dad, and like everyone in the family thought that someone will be a doctor. My dad, <laughs> he wanted to become a doctor, uh -huh. but like to get into med school, there's a pre-board exam. Mm -hmm. So just prior to few days before the exam, my dad, he was like, he got into some minor accident and he, he wasn't able to score very good at oh, the exam. Wow. So he failed to get into a med school mm -hmm. and like that was a bad luck. But I like, I didn't know this or I didn't, I was a kid when this all happened. Yeah. Like I, I think I was not even, even born when this, this was happened. Yeah, sure. This happened. So uh, when I like, when I uh, had the understanding of all the family things and my understanding, when I got, uh, got that, like, I thought I want to pursue my dad's dream. Sure, and of becoming a doctor. Of becoming a, becoming yeah. a doctor. And uh, even I like the medicine field because I have seen my family, uh, my, like, that's a personal thing. My uh, uncle, he passed away, like, he has a, he had a sudden cardiac arrest and he mm -hmm. wasn't able to, like, being revived because not a lot of people were aware, aware, uh, aware about the CPR techniques. Like, really? Yes, that's still a thing. Like, not everyone is aware of how to give a CPR or how to, like, wow. when do you start a CPR? Yeah. So that, that is one of the key thing. My grandma, she, like, she passed away. Uh, she also had some heart issues, but like, probably heart failure, we never knew. So the health, awareness of healthcare was not very prominent. Uh, back then, like, that happened 10 years back to my grandma and my uncle, I was not, I was not born then, but yeah. that's how I got a sense that I want to like pursue medicine as my future. And that's a family dream too. So I'll be, I am the first generation doctor and I'm the first one to, who will be practicing or learning medicine also, uh, outside like in, uh, in mm -hmm. the US too. So. Wow, that's one heck of an answer. Oh yeah. So first off, you had two family members who had undiagnosed probably heart disease and yeah. of course they were taken from you so that was emotionally yeah. difficult. Yes. Plus your father always wanted to become a doctor but because of some bad luck he uh -huh. was not able to do well enough on his exam. Yeah. You can't retake the exam? Uh, so you can but like back then after like you, you, you be, uh, there, there was a thing like uh, there's A and B group uh, after, like that's a board thing yeah. uh, I won't go into much detail but yeah, he could have taken it again, but he didn't. Like he just went with whatever was available to him. Yeah. Because uh, my family, like it was not the richest family. They all, they always want to settle and start earning as early as they can. So that, that makes sense. Yes. So instead of sitting for a year and taking the exam again, he went with like doing the engineering. He is okay. a electrical engineering in a, a very oh. good company in India. That's a renowned country, Oil and Natural Gas Corporation. So yeah. he's doing very well, and that is the reason I'm here. So did he have to wait a whole year to take the test again? So he didn't take the test again. With, well, to try the, to retake it. Yes, yeah. with the scores available, he was he managed to get into engineering school and he oh. became an electrical engineer. Okay. Yes. 
I mean, we like we put pressure on ourselves here in the U.S. on the SAT, ACT, uh -huh. GRE, you know, MCAT. Yeah. But you can retake those things five, ten, fifteen times. I mean, oh, no, yeah. nobody takes them that much. But like yeah. in one year, you could take each one of those tests four times. Easy. Oh, so so that is not the thing. So board exams they are conducted once every year. So yeah. if you if you get like if you pass or fail this year. If you want to like, if you don't get a satisfactory score and you want to yeah. try again, you will get to try again in the next year. You have to put your life on hold for a whole year. Yes. That's wow. Yes. So I can see why he just said, no, screw it. I just want to build a life. And, yeah. Let's know, continue with what we have and let's go for this. So. Yeah. Guys, those of you who live in the United States, like, <laughs> just be grateful for a minute that we don't have to, let's say, okay, let's say something like to his father. What's your father's name? Uh, Sanjay Bhai. Sanjay Bharo. Sanjay? Yeah, Sanjay. Sanjay Bharo? Yes. So, so let's say you're like Sanjay, and your whole dream, your whole life is to become a doctor. And you're going to this exam, you're ready, you're ready to pass it and get a high enough score to go to medical school. And then something happens, like car accidents or... Uh, so there was like, he went to a temple to, to pray. Yeah. And the... The, the door was not very well done, like it was just being newly renovated, it was not fixed well. Yeah. So when he was coming out, the door fell on him and he got a fracture of his arm. So, but he managed to take the test, but he he didn't like complete the test, so he didn't score very well. It was a pain like that. Oh yeah, that was. <laughs> that must have been. Oh my God. So you're, you're ready for this test and it's like the only thing standing between you and your dream is passing this test and then you go to med school and that's it. And then as you're coming out of the temple to pray to do well on this test, the door falls on you and breaks your arm. Mm -hmm. And then you still take the test and you get a good enough score to be an engineer. So that's what you do. And then you pass your dream on to your son to, do, yeah, uh, to become that, a doctor. Uh, one of the, like my motivation to do or the, my go, uh, role model who inspires me to get these things and that's my dad, my mom and dad, they both. Yeah. And my uncle, who is here in the U.S., who is practicing medicine, like I saw him for like when I came to the U.S. and I, when I saw him practicing medicine, mm -hmm. I was like, he is 54, yeah. and the way like the time or the dedication which he has for like for the field of medicine and for his yeah. patients, I was amazed. Like I was not even 50 percent of that. So I look forward to like be like them someday when yeah. I uh, when I start practicing actually for um, uh, in the field. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. You have some very good role models. Oh yes. I, I agree. I'm grateful for everyone, like for everything I have achieved till now and what I am yet to achieve yeah. to all these people. My mom, dad, mm -hmm. my uncle, they are my role model. Oh, <laughs> the phone keeps uh, keeps closing on us. Oh, but so, right, there you go. man, I mean, that's, uh, that's as good a motivation as any to go through the trials and tribulations of becoming a doctor and especially going over to the U.S. Yeah. is your father's dream to live out, losing some family members, wanting better for them. Good on you. I see why you're so motivated. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so I'm going to, just uh, to inform the audience, I'm going to move on to question two here. And the obvious answer to this one's going to be yes, but I'd like more details. So the question is, can a doctor from a different country transfer their MD to the United States? And if so, how? So, yes. The, the main thing for this question is your degree should be recognized by the medical board here in the US. Mm -hmm. So the MBBS degree which is done I think in India and in Pakistan I think it's the same. I'm not sure about Pakistan that this uh, it is called the MBBS. Yeah. But degree which you get from anywhere in the world it should be recognized by the uh, medical board here in the US. You can just check uh, check on the med uh, like uh, medical directory here in the US like if your degree okay. is valid here. If, the de if they are considering your degree, you just need to take your steps, the USMLE exams, yeah. and that's how you become MD, like a doctor of medicine here. Yeah. Okay, so if you have one of the qualifying degrees, such yes. as MBBS, yes. um, from India and Pakistan, and how do you search that? Would it be through the AAMC, or you just Google it? I think so, it should be through, uh, through the AAMC. I'll search, and then maybe I'll help you uh, in the comment section by writing, sure. mentioning that uh, link. 100%. Yeah, so we'll put that um, information maybe right in the video or at the very least in the notes yeah. for the video. Also, one thing I would like to add is like uh, not only degree but your med medical school should be recognized by the world director of uh, foreign medical education. Like there, there is a website called as WFME. Okay. So they, uh, your medical school should be recognized by, with them. Mm. So even okay. if the degree is by, uh, valid, like yeah. if, even if the degree is considered valid by yeah. the medical board here in the US, your medical school has to be recognized by the right. WFME too. So you can get a, a medical degree from a school that is not Which recognized is, by the US. Yeah, you can get yeah, like you can get your degree from any medical school, but 
your medical school as well as the degree both of them should be recognized by the medical board of sure. yours okay so you have to make sure you check that yes and that might also if you're considering going to medical school in india and pakistan and anywhere in the world yes uh that should be if you do want to practice in the united states mm -hmm. do you know your planning and good due diligence to make sure you choose a school and yes. a degree that will be res uh, recognized here. Yes. Because I'm assuming you can't really fix it. No. Okay. <laughs> At that you point, it's too late. Your, yeah. You have to choose your medical school. Like, if you think that you want to become a doctor someday in the U.S., then you have to make sure, like, uh, go through the credentials that your medical school and the degree which you'll get from there are verified or recognized by the U.S. Medical Board. Yes. yes. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put information, the websites, either right on the video here yeah. or in the notes. And I'll see if Ketul uh, and I can get together and maybe make a little document yeah, yeah, of websites sure. where you can do that. Yes. Okay, so because the purpose of this video is to help you people out. For you know, sure. folks that want to do the same thing that he's doing. So <laughs> I'm going to get together with him. We're going to make a little PDF and we'll share it with you. Yeah. Okay, and that'll be in the notes for the video because we're trying to be helpful. Oh, Hopefully we are. Two, three, one, two, six. I'm never going to be able to memorize oh, this. Oh, <laughs> I should just write it down. Uh, there you go. Two, three, one, two, six? Uh, zero. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Yeah, I'm not great with numbers. That's why I'm not an engineer. Uh, okay. So that's how a doctor from a foreign country, not the United States, can become an ND in the United States. So, since you have to have... So basically, if you're a foreign medical grad, your school and your degree have to be recognized by the U.S. MLE or by the uh, AAMC yes. uh, as something that's appropriate in order to transition to MD in the United States. Yes. And then you still have to pass step one, step two, step, two, step, step three, three. USMLE steps. Yes. So since that is a requirement, how did you study for step one, step two, and step three? Okay, so <laughs> the journey and the exams, they are very lengthy. Like uh, the USMLE step one exam, seven blocks, eight hour exam, step two, eight blocks, uh, and nine hour exam. So they are pretty long exam. You have to train uh, like not just by reading the books or reading the material, mm -hmm. but it is just you have to train physically enough that you sit for eight or nine hours straight and yeah. you can just uh, perform equally on throughout the day. So I, how I prepare for my exam. So I used to meditate every morning. I used meditate. to, yes, okay. I, do, I used to do meditation. I, even I do today too, like every day. Mm -hmm. uh, that has been a part of my lifestyle now. So I meditate every, I meditate every morning. Uh, that's how I start my day. I go for a jog. Like I used to go for a jog or walk in the morning every day. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, there there is a lot of medical uh, review materials available for US MLE. Mm -hmm. So now I'll come to that portion. So regarding materials, you solve Q, uh, question banks, the Q banks, and U World is uh, on the top of that. There are a few other uh, question banks available, but I just went with the U World because that's U -World. the U World. I've heard of U World. Yeah. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. That's one of the uh, top-notch QBank available. There's one more, Amboss. I used it uh, during certain part of my preparation, mm -hmm. but majority of my study prep was from the U-World and the first aid. That's a book, like, it is literally a first aid for anyone who is preparing for this journey, mm -hmm. the USMLE. So for step one and step two, these two things remain the standard. You have to prepare on, on the, only on the basis of that, like you read the U-World and the first aid. There are a lot of materials depending on what subject you are preparing for. Sure. So for microbiology, there's Sketchy. Like those who are good mm. with the pictorial memory, Sketchy mm. is a resource which which will help you like for microbiology and pharmacology as well. Oh cool. Yeah, and for pathology, I used to do the Pathoma. That's one of the best. I, I like after reading Pathoma for the first time during my MLE journey, mm -hmm. uh, I thought like, why didn't I use this material while while I was preparing for pathology during my med school? Oh sure, is yeah, that good? Huh? That, that it is that good. So yeah. yes, Pathoma is a really good material for pathology. But uh, yeah, apart from that, uh, there's Kaplan, Kaplan Q Bank, or the Kaplan uh, material you can use for reviewing your biostats or medical ethics question. It is really good at forgive you for the those questions, even for the behavioral science questions. Wait, let me uh, let me interject here with a quick question. Yes. So there's a bunch of different question banks and it seems like you're using certain question banks for certain topics. So uh, the material which I am talking about it is just the review materials. The Q bank is just one. The U one. Mm. Yeah, so okay. the, there's so one, one Q bank. One Q bank. Like there are two or three more Q banks, mm -hmm. but I use one U world, and the second was a uh, second one is called as the Amboss, okay. which I use for like a certain portion of uh, preparation, not all uh, all the things. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. And then the other ones is uh, review materials. Yes. You okay. review all the questions, like all the topics or the subjects from there, sure. and then you can practice the questions from the UWorld QBank. Mm, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And this will be in the document as well. Yes. But basically, uh, his uh, the question banks that he used, the materials that he used, and what he recommends for which. Yes. So, yeah, definitely good inside knowledge. Oh, yeah. There. And I'm not going to ask you to share your stats and your scores, but did you do pretty well on your step one, step two? So, yes. Uh, I, um, the thing with which, uh, which happened with me was like I used to do really very well uh, on my NBMEs. I used to score in 250, 40s and 50s. What percentile was that? Uh, I don't know the exact percentile. Top 10%, top 25%? No, 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 I was never the top 10%. I would never, never not say that. Okay. Uh, it should be top 30 or 40, I think. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's In good. the top half, for sure, like yes. solidly in the top half. Yes, so I pretty, like I performed above average on all the steps, and that's good. Like I have most yeah. recent step, I, sh I shared that with you. Did. Yeah, so yeah, I, I'm done with all my steps now, and mm -hmm. I'm above average in all the steps. Not the step, uh, not like that happens with everyone that after receiving the score, you feel like I could have done better. But you that, always feel like but, that. Yes, always. but we are at the point that now we cannot change anything. So yeah, it is what it is. You have to accept and move on. How good of uh, scores on step one, step two, step three do you have to have to match for cardiology residency? Actually, uh, you're going for fellowship. Fellowship. So, so to match into uh, internal medicine resi yeah. residency. I think a score of 240 on step one, a mm -hmm. two, score of 245 to 250 on step two, that's really a good score. Okay. If you go for your step three, two before applying, then a score of 230 is good enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was uh, near all of these scores in all the exams. Okay, so that's for internal medicine? Yes, that's for internal medicine. Okay. And but then, if you plan to go for a surgical branch, then you need to be on the top 10% top of, uh, like top 10% of the scorers, okay. so that you get into that residency. Okay. So that would be around 260 or 270. If you score that much good in all the steps, then it would be like you would be most welcome as an IMG because for inter international medical graduates, it is much that you have a very good score on your steps. Mm. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So there are even more strict with foreign medical grads um, as far as their scores for their steps. If you want to get yes. into a competitive specialty, neurosurgery, yes. orthopedic surgery. Surgery, dermatology, uh, even psychiatry is getting uh, a bit competitive here in the US for IMGs. Is it? Yeah. Interesting. But yeah. they, like for psychiatry, you don't need a score of 260s or 250s. 240, 250 is good enough. So it's slightly higher than internal medicine? Yes. Okay. What about like pediatrics, primary care? That's almost same as internal medicine. Okay. Yeah. Like plus or minus 510. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, actually, the most, the best thing to go through will be to go through the NRMP match data they release every year because NRMP, they, sh they share all the stats, like how many percent of the IMGs they match into which specialty and yeah. what were their average scores oh, oh. and what were like, what was the research experience they had, what was the, how was their CV, everything is shared, like every small uh, statistical detail is shared by the NRMP in a form of PDF. So you can always visit, visit the NRMP website mm -hmm. and you can like retrieve all those data from the recent match and maybe five or ten ten year back the match that happened. Okay, the most recent class. Yes. Okay, so if you want to match into a certain specialty, let's say you're a foreign medical grad, your dream is to be a surgeon, a general surgeon yes. in the United States, you can know exactly what kind of score you're going to need in order yes. to get on step one, step two. Yeah. Uh, so you know how hard you have to study. Yes. You know? I highly recommend, like you go through the NRMP uh, match data and that will help you a lot with like know that what you what score or what you are targeting for so that so that you know gotcha and that'll be in the document as well yes a link to that or at the very least from last year yes so I know all these things so as somebody that applied to a medical program not yeah. medical school the PA school mm -hmm. it's daunting trying to find all this information oh yeah it's daunting trying to find out the links even though it's just a simple Google search it's yes. it's very daunting trying to find the links to all these things whether they're accurate uh, how to apply, all the different things. So it's yes. just any little bit that we can do to help. Yeah, you know? it's always good. Like if you have someone to guide, I, I got a lot of good guidance from my seniors and my like alumni from my med school. So yeah. I, like, I would uh, definitely thank them for all the efforts Absolutely. or all the help they have done to me. And I would like to do the same for anyone who is up, like incoming or uh, pursuing the same journey. Absolutely. Like, really, yeah. Thank really you for sharing your knowledge. Oh yeah. Question three was how did you study for step one, step two, step three? We discussed that. Okay, so switching gears a little bit. Mm -hmm. So as most of my audience knows, I'm a physician assistant 
if you guys are new here, I'm a physician assistant. If you don't know what that is, Google it. But <laughs> so three people in my own program, in my physician assistant school, were kind of in your position. Mm -hmm. They were foreign medical grads, so they got their training in India. One guy was from Congo, and they decided instead of taking the steps and all of that and becoming an MD in the United States, they yeah. decided to become a physician assistant yeah. uh, or a nurse practitioner. Mm -hmm. So those are all also options. Yes. What do you think about that option? Instead of studying for the steps and trying to become an MD, mm -hmm. using your degree and becoming a PA or an MP? Yeah. So I would say it depends on uh, the individual, what they want to do with, uh, like what they want to do in the future. Sure. And there are a lot of different variables that can affect what you are going to do actually in life. Everybody wants to do something and they end up doing something else. That can happen with everyone, even with me, I'm not sure. But yeah, I'm sure that I, I, am, I want to do fellowship and I, I've been cardiology and I will do that. But uh, if you are a fresh graduate, then doing MD or like the residency here in the US is the top priority which everyone uh, look forward to do that. Mm -hmm. But for an older graduate, what they can do is like they can go with, they can take a longer path of going through a physician assistant school and taking the physician, physician assistant uh, experience firsthand and then they can apply uh, for residency maybe later in the future if they want to. Like it, is, it depends on the individual. Sometimes like I have seen or I have heard that if a certain individual uh, went unmatched to the cycle, like he applies for the cycle, he, get, he went unmatched, like he didn't mat match into a residency program. He applies again, he didn't match into a residency program. Smart. Then in that case, like to keep waiting for more, uh, years and years, it is better to go to the physician assistant school or the, uh, what, the, the other options. Yeah, nurse practitioner. Nurse practitioners and yeah. Yes, yeah, right. an RN. Yes, yeah, so yeah, you so. can go with that path too. Yeah. It depends. That's smart. I actually didn't think about that because mm -hmm. I was thinking like you have an MD from a different country, you choose, you know, MD, yeah. PA, MD. But he's talking about, let's say you, uh, maybe your English isn't very good or for whatever reason, you're not yeah. a great test taker. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, you didn't score high enough on the US MLE step yeah. one and step two in order to match into the residency that you wanted or any residency possibly. Yeah. Um, and so what are your options? You can just keep waiting or, or you can maybe Go, go with a yeah, PA or a uh, registered nurse yeah, yeah. And, and do a specialty. Like it depends on how motivated you are to do the to pursue what you are dreaming of. Yeah. So that is one of the thing. So th th that takes a lot. Yeah. The, to become MD here, like you need to be highly motivated because to keep on taking the exams, apply and to go through the cycle, everybody does that. But not everyone is lucky enough to get into a, a medicine program. So just keep working towards it and whatever happens in life that's like everything happens for a good reason i believe in i think so, so. yeah yeah because i mean pa is a great career field yes and it is. is a great career anything related to medicine i would say that's always a blessing that you are there you are pursuing that and you are able to serve people on uh, while being on the front end so anything like that be grateful i completely agree yeah it's definitely a privilege to be able to practice medicine yes uh in any field but yeah so if you happen to be in that position and for whatever reason you're having trouble with the exams, mm -hmm. just know that there's uh, other options for you. Yeah. Look into physician assistant, look into nurse practitioner, look into yes. RN. One of the other options uh, is doing an MCH. Uh, that's, uh, I forgot the full name. MCH? Yeah. What's that? MCH, I forgot the full name of that. You need to cut this portion, but I yeah. don't. <laughs> uh, what does the job entail? So that's basically being epidemiologist, like studying about the disease prevalence. You do some research studies while you are studying. Oh. Uh, oh, MPH, sorry, Master in Public Health. That's MPH. MPH. So there's one. That. Yeah. So there's one more option of be, uh, going to MPH school. That's Masters in Public Health. Mm -hmm. While studying for MPH, people do take like uh, prepare for the steps, yeah. and they take their uh, resident, like they apply for residency by the end of their MPH or while they are pursuing MPH. There are certain MPH programs that would allow you to. I'll, uh, attend the lectures online when you match into a residency program so there's also one way people do that one of my colleagues like she is doing that she she is doing MPS right now and then she'll be applying for a residency so there are a lot of options to ultimately end up into doing medical like residency here in the US these are all the paths which everyone prefers like I prefer to directly go with the MD residency I'll be directly applying after completing all my steps some people while preparing for these programs like being a physician assistant or being like uh, going for the MPS school they prepare and then they apply for residency 
That's it's always a, an option too. Yes, there's always an option. It's a very long game. Yes. Very, very long. Because the whole, I mean, residency, if you do a fellowship plus studying for everything, that you're definitely looking at a decade. Yeah, at least, at least, like the fastest you can do is uh, six years. Not yeah. before that. Even for a three-year residency, that's what you're looking yeah, at. Yeah, because cardiology, like the residency itself takes, uh, so the residency is three years, three years of fellowship, so that takes six years at least. Yeah. So, yeah. Plus all the applying and the studying, yes, so yes. it's a very, very long path. Yeah. Um, yeah. So definitely for those of you who want to come have a very good life in the United States, make very good money, practice medicine, mm -hmm. but maybe not, you know, have the MD or do the exact field that you want to, you can always be a PA, you can always be an NP. Yes. You know, that's what I chose. I'm not a foreign medical grad. I you know, went to school here in the United States. But yeah, it's just, it's always a good option. Yes. And if you want more information on being a physician assistant, look at my other 200 plus videos. <laughs> All right, there's definitely more than enough information on being a PA. That's not what this video is about. Yeah. Okay. And so question five, I think we definitely already covered. What, pra what specialty do you want to practice? So yeah, the cardiology is the one. Mm -hmm. uh, before that, like I, I was more into neurology. I did like a uh, shadow a physician back at home in India for a few months. Yeah. I wanted to do neurology, but uh, I also like neurology and cardiology were the options I was looking forward. But with the uh, as I said, with the history, with, like my family history I had yeah. uh, regarding cardiac uh, conditions which they had, which was not recognized mm -hmm. or which we were not aware of. Like my dad, he's super into health. Like. He pre uh, he do meditation. He go he goes for a job. Oh, that's where you get that. So yes, I got. I said my dad. Yeah. He is my motivation. Like he is the source yep. of everything for me. Like Sanjay. Uh, yes. Yep. He sounds like the man. Uh, yes, he is. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So that's how I decided. Like between, uh, between neurology and cardiology, I went with cardiology. I did some uh, shadowing with a physician here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. He was one of the best physician. Like every patient whom I saw while I was shadowing him, mm -hmm. the patient would tell, like, just look at me and tell, you are in good hands. And I would say, yes, mm -hmm. I know. So that's, I, good, that's, that's yeah. where I... The patients like him too. Yes. Yeah. And I saw like the way he practiced medicine mm -hmm. and the communication skills he, he had. So that was amazing. Yeah. And that's how I molded my way that I want, I'll go with cardiology as my future. Is yeah, like absolutely. Finish. Yeah, I don't think you're going to have any problem with that. Oh, no. You're definitely motivated. Your communication is fantastic. Your vibe is very welcoming. Yeah, thank you know, you. <laughs> yeah, I think you're going to be just fine. I think you're going to do great. Let's see. Your, your patients are going to be lucky to have you. <laughs> thank you. So you want us to practice cardiology. Very, very different from neurology. Oh, that's way far. Tremendously different. Yes. Very different patient population. <laughs> very different everything. Yes. yes. Um, but yeah. Okay, so we're going to switch gears again a little bit. And my next question is, what are some major differences you notice between India and the United States? Not even in healthcare. Okay. I'm just talking about culture, people, priorities. Mm -hmm. Just what are some cultural differences? So the first cultural difference you see, uh, we like we are coming here uh, to pursue our residency or to study or to get a higher like uh, future education here in the U.S. So we are leaving our family behind at our home and we are coming here so the first thing which we realize after coming here is like you don't have family here yeah so that's the big uh, uh what would i say how, how would i describe it but yeah that's the big thing uh, you will instantly realize you definitely meet good people around you you make new friends you make like uh, make a big uh, welcoming community wherever you go i have been like this is the second state new york where i have been but Everyone I I have met here, met here, they are really welcoming and very like, <laughs> you know that you know that. We try. <laughs> yeah, they are very welcoming and they always want to help you. So that is one of the uh, thing that pushed me like want like made made me want to do a residency here in the U uh, U.S. The people here are very welcoming, are very good, very well mannered and very well cultured. That's nice to hear. Oh yes, <laughs> because <laughs> I I am saying as it is. Yeah. Uh, I have seen or I have felt, mm -hmm. so that's true. And there are a lot of cultural differences, uh, like, uh, I cannot uh, describe everything in a single... <laughs> Not everything, just what, what jumps out, what's the first thing that's just different? Like, you get off the plane here, you start talking to people in the United States, what's the first thing you just notice? Like, oh wow, that's, that's different. Everything. Everything. Okay. Everything. Everything. Everything is different. <laughs> But I, I miss the like the cultural thing, the uh -huh. the uh, social or the cultural thing. I miss those from my home or my country. Uh, I feel like I would want to feel that feel that way, which I miss here. 
but you always make some friends you always connect as we are living in this generation of 5G and the phones and video calls yeah, right. you are always connected with the family but sure. uh, being away from the family is the only thing i miss uh, the both the, the beauty about us is after coming here i have met uh, people from like mexican people mm-hmm. spanish people the mm-hmm. native american people and there's a beauty that us and india share together that's a country of a big diversity a big uh, like there are a lot of languages different languages different cultures here i have seen that people are living together with all the diversities here if you see in the same batch of residents i i have met like a doctor who is from china a doctor who is from mm-hmm. pakistan a doctor who is from india a doctor who is from korea korea mm-hmm. so that's not very common i have never seen something like that back at home in india so that's mm-hmm. a very unique a unique thing which i have seen here in the us that you meet people from all the different nationalities everywhere. from everywhere and yeah. that's a very unique thing so that helps you like you get to you get uh, sensitized with all different cultures mm-hmm. and learn uh, different things about different cultures yes. and that's the best thing i would say Yeah, if you can, you can take the best of every culture. And yes, yes. Hope yes. to improve. If I was ba- like, if I, I stayed back at home in India, I might not have like, uh, sen- I, uh, sense that I like, I, I might not have been in touch with anyone, any one of these people, mm-hmm. and learned uh, about these different cultures unless I, I like, actively look forward to yes. learn about this. Yes, thing. you wouldn't just run into them in your yes. everyday life. And yes, yes. So that's the too. key difference I have seen. Like, and that i am enjoying it i am i like i admire that that i, I am lucky enough to be here and be uh, yeah. connected with these people around that's something you take for granted because mm-hmm. a lot of countries in the world like there's immigrants there's people from other places there's tourists yes. but it's not like the united states yeah. where everybody is from somewhere else mm-hmm. oh yeah literally everybody is from somewhere else within one usually two generations yes, yes. you know places like india it's mm-hmm. just it's not places yeah. like china it's not japan it's not Yes. You know, it's it's definitely something we take for granted here. That that's the best part. Of, that's the beauty or the best part of our US. You meet people from every nation here. Everywhere. Yeah. It is really cool. Yes. Okay, so that was culturally. How about medicine? What's the main thing that you notice is different between the United States and India as far as medicine goes? So, the way the practice uh the way a doctor practices here in the US and uh there in india is a bit different the medical knowledge or the algorithms or protocols which you follow is is the same thing it's not going to change oh, the same yeah they are they are the same like how do you diagnose a case of uh, heart failure it will it will remain the same it's not going the to change the same criteria yeah it's you not going to change that's uh, as you sent or you guys everything is the same yes that's the same thing it's not going to change oh, that's refreshing but the thing that yeah. changes how we practice it so in india uh for not i'm not talking about the private hospitals the big private hospitals but the majority of the hospitals where you go doctor uh, doctor have their cabin mm-hmm. and the patients come in like the uh, patients have to visit the doctor mm-hmm. the patient doctor examines the patient they take the history they diagnose they treat the patient yeah and the patient uh, now the patient goes a second patient comes in so doctor has a cabin and the patient is the one who would come in and get examined and Why? go Like why is that so different here? And here in the US it's completely yeah. opposite. Patients have their own cabin like there are 10 uh, 10 patient uh, 10 offices. Yeah. The patient sits there, the doctor yeah. would the come doctor in. Doctor goes from patient, patient to patient. Yeah. Why is it like that? I I'm not sure like but this is the first thing which I really like which I experienced here after coming like I was amazed uh, oh, okay weird, we have it? to visit, we go there we mm-hmm. have to visit the patient in their offices. So that's that doesn't change how you practice. No. That's just the setup. Uh, of the practice which is yeah. very different uh, from back at home in india that's interesting yeah so for those of you that practice here in the united states can you imagine that you just sit in your office with your exam table your all of your tools and then the patients are the ones that come in yeah you're not knocking on the door and coming into their room yeah they're coming in to see you yeah so in <laughs> some of the private hospitals as, as i said earlier there are some of the private hospitals the big private hospitals they have this system like us where patient get gets sure. their own uh, own office and the doctor goes and visits them so there is there is one of the infrastructure or uh, foundational thing yeah. but the the way doctor practices is the is the same thing that there, mm-hmm. there's nothing uh, different in that the way they practice yeah. yeah the availability of the latest techniques like there are uh these hospitals they have like bleeding as they are uh doing some research uh, in finding new techniques to treat or to diagnose mm-hmm. the india or any other developing nation they are like uh, still developing those things they are not at the bleeding edge of, uh, edge of that we are still developing 
on that we are just following or we are still exploring all these things yeah us is ahead of everyone right now in the field of healthcare in the field of surgical management or surgery germany or the europe they are on the bleeding as they are on the top mm. of their so every nation has their own benefit or uh, own advantage of being ahead in something the doctors in uh, india they can like they examine up to 100 patients a day 200 up to 100 patients wow. a day in the government setting if you see mm-hmm. there some pay some some practices they might see even more than that 150 in one day in one day wow. that, so that's the thing if you practice in india if you practice in a government setup government hospital mm-hmm. you will be skilled enough that you will be able to see all these patients in and get the things right most of the times like i would say 95 or 99% 95% of the times yeah. that you are to the point and you are diagnosing and treating perfectly so 100 patients a day yeah that happens if you go to a, a government setting that that's a, yeah. uh, that's how it is let me ask you this do you document yeah the documentation is the key thing no matter how many patients you see you have to do like those doctors they are fast at everything examining yeah. documentation history taking treating everything how do you examine make a treatment plan, see, discuss, speak with 200 patients a day, and also document. So uh, that's a skill that develops over time. Nobody on impossible. the possible. That nobody on the first day would be able to do that. Well, no. And that's a health, uh, not a single po- uh, doctor is going to do that. That's a team of doctors, like three to four oh. doctors, who will be covering up all these patients in the okay. uh, entire duration. So it's not 200 per doctor. No, no, no. That's no, it's like 40 per doctor. 40 or 50. 50, 50. Okay, yeah, that, that's what I'm seeing at Urgent Care now, and I'm slow. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. I was about to say 200 is, no. <laughs> I've heard of people doing 90 in a 12-hour shift. Oh, okay. Not, not 200. But so that's between a team of physicians. Yes. So, okay, so you're seeing like 40, 50 sometimes. Yes, yes. Okay, that's totally believable. I've seen that. I've done that. <laughs> oh, that, that's that I believe. And you still have to document everything. But, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I was about to say, no way. 200, that, that's impossible. <laughs> no, that's impossible. Because in, if an individual is seeing 200 per day, then there, are, there is a lot of chance that you are getting something wrong. Exactly. Because exactly. you are missing on documentation, you are misdiagnosing, or something can get something wrong. Something's wrong. Yeah, because that's, and that's we, we never possible. want to compromise healthcare exactly. at the cost of just for turnover. Yes. Yeah, which a lot of practices do kind of want to do. We call it, we call it a meat grinder. It's like oh. the worst metaphor ever, but it's they call practices that do that. They just want you to see as many as you possibly can, and they don't care about the quality of care. They call that a meat grinder uh, because they just like they want to get them in and out, see and get the money, and they don't I care. Um, and so that people that care about other people's healthcare, the whole reason we're doing this. It's very difficult for folks like that to work in that environment. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's why when I heard two hundred a day, I was like, what? Okay, so <laughs> no, two hundred divided by five. Yes, got it. Yes. So forty a day. Yeah. Okay, still a lot, mm-hmm. but yeah. much more manageable. Yeah. Okay, and it's interesting that you said that Germany and I guess the rest of Europe is more on the cutting edge okay. surgically than we are here. Yes. Also, so uh, two of my like one of my batchmate and one of my seniors they are like they wanted to pursue surgery as well yeah. as like uh, residency in surgical field mm-hmm. so they were also looking for options and they came up with like uh, Europe like Germany they have the best surgical residency or the surgical future really? and they are yeah they are on the bleeding edge like in the robotic surgeries and the AI oh, the like AI is just uh, evolving but right. uh, regarding so robotic surgery they were like keen on getting into robotic surgery so wow. they are pursuing residency like one of them is pursuing a residency one of uh, them is still in a way so yeah that's a vinci robot you've heard of that yes is that from germany i'm not sure about that but i like i got the insight insight about surgical residency being best in germany from these people really i never uh searched for the options for surgical residency Mm -hmm. because i i I don't i didn't look forward for surgical residency so yeah i didn't know that (laughs) i mean i guess it makes sense german engineering yeah. I just, I always thought, you know, as an American, we have the best, but <laughs> uh, obviously not. You know, some so, of the world does yeah. things way better than we do. Yeah. So that's interesting. We definitely have the most expensive, but yes, perhaps yes. they have the best. And that is the reason collaborating in medicine is better for every nation and everyone mm-hmm. around here. For, for the patients, for the doctors, collaboration is the best thing which we can do. Mm-hmm. Like we can a- expand our knowledge, we can exchange our thoughts, we can exchange our technology and exchange our, extend the way we treat pa- yeah. the patients. 100%. Yeah. So what would you say is the best here? You said like cardiology training would be the best in the United States. Yes. Why is that? Is that because of the medications we have, because of the institutions, the mm-hmm. training? Like, why is it better? And then why is surgery better in, um, in Germany? Um, I, I don't have any good answer for no, that. No, it's so, okay. <laughs> but uh, 
you uh, the education in general i would say in us it has a lot to offer to mm-hmm. people who, are, who want to pursue like future med- future in medicine mm-hmm. us has a us has a good education system yeah. and uh, infrastructure and technology to offer mm-hmm. here in the us for medicine okay. interesting i didn't know that mm-hmm. as i didn't know the U- i mean i knew the us especially for uh, for certain specialist degrees medicine included mm-hmm. Uh, was kind of top of the line. A lot of people yeah. from different countries come here. Yes. You know, go to any college town, Syracuse included, around the college, you'll see yeah. tons of very expensive vehicles from all the foreign money mm-hmm. sending their kids. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, that I'm sure that happens in other countries too, but it happens here at every single major university. Mm-hmm. So U.S. education, believe it or not, higher education is still top so, notch, yes. you know, world class. Uh, so that's good to hear. Oh, yeah. Glad we're doing something right. That's very encouraging. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I guess we're gonna skip uh, seven and eight, correct? Um, yeah. We're skipping yeah. those. Okay, sorry, you guys don't get to hear answers to seven and eight. <laughs> we decided to not discuss these things. Yeah. Um, okay, so the last hard question, and then we have two easy questions. Okay, okay? <laughs> let's go so, with that. So, the last hard question. If you could give one piece of advice to someone who wants to become a doctor, mm-hmm. doesn't have to be in India, doesn't have to be in the United States, just anybody who yeah. wants to become a doctor, what is that piece of advice? So first, I'll go with in general advice, not not pertaining to medicine or being a doctor. So mm-hmm. pursue or do what you uh, you like enjoying, like mm-hmm. uh, you enjoy doing. Because in the future, if you go ten years down the line, I like I personally ask this question to a lot of doctors, even my uncle who is practicing here. Mm-hmm. Uh, like they, everybody had the same answer, and I felt the same thing. That if you are doing something you which you like. You won't feel that you are working every day. You are just doing something which you like every day. You're playing. Yes, it's that's not work, it's it. that's being on autopilot mode and just you go, you pre- you do something which you like mm-hmm. and you come back home and you are always like you already uh, you are always in a good uh, mental condition, yeah. like mental status that 100%. you have, you are not stressing enough. Yes. So that is the first thing I would say. Now regarding medicine, if you are thinking of medicine, like you have decided that you want to pursue medicine, mm-hmm. being consistent is and hope keeping hope hope in the sense uh, you have to be a believer in yourself mm-hmm. that you can do it and you have if you have a good family support then I, I i bet that you can do that without failing and that's how i made it here until here and I, if i will make it in future too that's just because of my family support and the mm-hmm. hope and the belief my i would uh, get i would say a single word that is my belief system that my mom and dad and the family support yeah. and the, uh, the belief which i have in myself that's uh, how it keeps going so first off figure out that it's exactly what you want to do yeah if you're stressed out every time you study something in medicine or you don't like it mm-hmm. you know you're not going to want to do that every day you're yeah. not going to put in the 16 hour days you're just you're just not if it's some if it feels like play Yes. Now, I'm not saying that studying medicine is not hard work. It is hard work and you don't always want to do it. Mm-hmm. But when you're doing it to any degree, if that feels like play, yes. you know, you're getting your experience, you're working as a medical assistant, you're getting your experience and you get to talk to a patient and you just, you could do that forever. Yeah. Then you're in the right field. Yes. Okay. You should enjoy what you are doing. And enjoy that's what how you're doing. Be on autopilot mode, I would say. Autopilot. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. like once you've decided that, then he says, be consistent. Because but being consistent so is very, is the key thing. Like the USMLE exams, which we took, I took all three exams in the duration of uh, two years. I started in um, May of 2021 and I completed my uh, step three in May of 2023. So that's two years and I took all my exams. Uh, those who are preparing for USMLE or who have done USMLE, they, they might be aware that uh, to take all these exams in this certain amount of time, it's uh, difficult and it requires consistency while you are practicing, like you are doing some practice at your home yeah. and preparing for your exam and you want to come here and do, uh, get some US clinical experience everything being together and uh, being like finishing all these things it requires your dedication and being consistent throughout the journey so you need to believe in yourself you need to have a good support from your friends too i would like to thank my friend circle yeah, like we prepared absolutely. for all the exams together and oh, that's, that's how great. i would say they, they were one of the key yeah. reason i was able to make it mm-hmm. happen in this uh, short consistency period. camaraderie yes. everyone doing the same thing same thing you can't there do it was, alone 
there was always a healthy competition with between us. I won't oh, say right. that. I won't say that there was even a competition. There was always a discussion we used to do. Like everyone. Healthy competition. Yeah, healthy yeah. competition. I would like that's a word which which we, which can which I can toss here. Mm-hmm. But we would keep like we would push each other. Like some days I would feel like oh, okay, I am not able to do this or mm-hmm. I just want a break. We yeah. would push each other in yes. everything, and that's how we met. We all, all uh, like all of us are from our group we, uh, who were preparing for the journey. We are almost towards the end of the journey, awesome. and we'll begin a new journey from now. So oh. yeah. Oh and yeah, the journey never ends. <laughs> yes. Well, congratulations to you. Congratulations to your whole team of thank you very much. classmates. I, I could definitely vouch for that. In my post back, I had two friends. Oh. I, mean, I mean, I was friends with the whole group, but. Oh. Two friends that I was very consistent with, Jackie and Security. Wow. Jackie is in medical school. Security just finished law school. I see. Um, so, and like, it's just something about people going through the struggle with you. Yes. Like you said, you wake up, you don't feel like studying today. Yes. And then there's Security who's already read the whole chapter and she's taking notes and you're like, Security, what the heck? What is wrong with you? But she's just brilliant and she just, she does that. And that makes me feel inadequate, but in a good way because now I have to do work. Yes. And then maybe she got a 98 and I got a 92. Mm-hmm. It's like, all right, I'm fine. And let's say Jackie got a 95, but then it's like my two friends yeah. are doing better than me. I don't want to be the worst friend, mm-hmm. so now I have to study harder on the next one. And, and yeah. maybe I'll beat them. Yeah. You, know, you never beat Sukurdi, but maybe I'll beat Jackie. I don't know. But either way, so it's just like you need your teammates, yes. you need your camaraderie, and your family if you're lucky enough to have that too. Yes, yes. You're you blessed know? enough if you have someone like you have made these friends through, through the journey. You're blessed enough. So be grateful for, uh, to everyone and be thankful to everyone. That's how you make it. And consistency is a big one. So yes. medicine is not something you can cram, yes. unfortunately. For one test, yes. Yes. So here I would like to add in this uh, journey, like not only USML, any journey you prepare for, it's a marathon and not a sprint. So you have to, you so at some part of the track, you have to push hard. And at some part of the track, you have to slow down and just yeah. keep walking. But yeah. Baby steps are important than no steps. So just keep working, keep mm-hmm. keep taking a step, and that's how you will make it. But remember, this is a marathon and not a sprint. So it's definitely you have to time. keep working. Yeah. And, uh, you just keep going. Not back off. Yeah. And prioritize health. Yes. Prioritize health. Prioritize, prioritize health. sleep. Sleep is very wow. important. Something you can never tell me. Important. I'm going on about one and a half hours. <laughs> <I'm> definitely <laughs> fading. This is coffee number three. <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, try to prioritize sleep. I don't know. Yeah. Not everybody needs it, I guess. Yeah. But. I really liked, whoops, man, I am tired, I just dropped my cup. Uh, so I really like what you said, I think when I asked you about preparing for the test, mm-hmm. the first thing you said wasn't about studying or like your resources, it was about meditation and taking yes. a jog. Yes. You said first things first, I had my routine, I took my meditation and I took my jog, I got into a good mental state and physical state. Yes. So prioritizing your health is yes. very important when you're doing something yeah. that's going to take you 10 Nothing years. is above yourself, like if something, 100%. if you are doing something and it is not like you are not being satisfied by the end of the day that's not worth doing that yeah so do something which you are like which you enjoy it should be like i would repeat that be on autopilot do something which you enjoy and it shouldn't be uh, like you shouldn't feel that you are just actively making an effort doing that yeah. it should be just passive you are just doing it because you like it or you enjoy doing that yeah you're not watching the clock yes all day you're getting lost in it you know yes. you're trying to learn more so yeah. absolutely yeah. that's how you know you're passionate about something yes I'm not saying there aren't days when you're watching the clock, you want to go do something, you're tired, but at least not all the time. Yes. You know? Yes. Okay. So that's your one piece of advice for someone who wants to become a doctor. Yes. So fun questions. What's your favorite food? <laughs> so my favorite food, it's pizza. Pizza? I, have, I would never say no to pizza. Okay. So, I didn't know that. Yeah. Pizza is my favorite food. But um, here, after coming to US, I have like very little choice of pizzas because I am a vegetarian. I don't eat like mm. any kind of meat. Yeah. So I just get one. That's the cheese pizza, or mm. I can just make my own pizza by adding uh, vegetables on, like okay. all the veggies on the pizza. So yeah. But back at home in India, there are a lot of different varieties. You uh, like the viewers who uh, are from India. If you're from India, though, they might be aware. Like they will be aware that there are a lot of different options which you can have for pizza. But yeah, that's my favorite food. I would say. Good. I didn't know India was big for pizza. Yeah, people love really? pizza. Really? Yeah. Is it made like it is here in the United States with the tomato sauce and the cheese? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Really? So there are like uh, very different kind of pizzas available. Like you can get Italian style pizza, Mexican yeah. style pizza. The, the classic New York style pizza, like yeah. it won't taste uh, taste or feel like it's New York style pizza, mm-hmm. but they, like, they, they do try yeah. to make it that way. 
Oh. But yeah, you get a lot variety of pizzas back at home in India. And I, I, I did not know that. Yeah. I didn't know that you go to India and everybody's eating pizza. <laughs> I thought everyone's eating Indian food. No, they're no, eating no, pizza. No, no, no. So <laughs> Indian people, when they are in India, they yeah. enjoy every different, like they want to have all uh, all kind of food apart from Indian food. Sure. So, and while they are, uh, while they travel here to the US, they want to have Indian food. <laughs> so we are the people. Why? <laughs> Makes no sense. <laughs> that, that's, that happens, like uh, yeah. uh, that's a common thing. It's here, so after funny. coming here, we would find, where, where do we find an Indian restaurant or where, where can we get some Indian food? Mm -hmm. And while we are in India, we would go and have some macaroni or pasta or oh, pizza. Oh, it's not Indian Yes, yes. yes. Oh, God. What is it called? There's a really good Indian restaurant here. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what it's called. Oh, okay. But it's very close. Uh, we'll go there sometime now. We should. There's also pizza. <laughs> yeah. There's definitely plenty of pizza. Perfect. All right. What's your favorite color? Blue. Uh, you can see. Like that kind of blue or this kind of blue? I got a lot of different blue here. Any kind of blue. Any blue? <laughs> yeah. He just likes blue? I like blue. <laughs> All right. And can I ask 11 or no? I'm going to cut it out. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Are you sure? Because yeah. you might get, you know there's a billion Indian people, right? Ah, it's okay. You might get I, a lot I, of emails. I would be happy to help, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> people, Americans especially, have been hearing me say that are going to be like, you're so mean. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. But no, it's all a good fun. Yeah. Um, so basically, question 11, and that's why I asked him permission, was if people want to get a hold of you, ask you questions, yeah. specifically for going you know, from Medicine. doctor in India to doctor in the United States, what are your options? Because yeah. I get a lot of YouTube comments on how do I do this, how do I do that, no. do U.S. schools take this certificate or that certificate, I don't know these things, but <laughs> it's all mine. Yes, yes. So, for sure, I would be really very happy to help you because um, I have been through there and I know how, how it feels when you get someone who knows uh, and will help you. Mm -hmm. So definitely, I would really happy to help you. So I'm going to put it on the screen and also in the, actually I'm not going to put it on the screen, I'm going to put it in the information for the video yeah. and it's going to say contact Ketul, yeah. it's going to be his email Yes. Um, because you might get flooded with questions and we might have to remove it. Oh, yeah. So I'm not going to put it on the screen. I'm just going to put it in the information because yeah, sure. there's a chance we may have to remove it at least for some time yeah. if you're very busy, you know. Yeah, yeah, sure. So at least for now, until he gets flooded with questions, if you want to contact Ketul and ask him about his journey, just yeah. for motivation, or if there's any specific questions, uh, he sure. at least at this time is happy to help. For so sure. I'll put his email <laughs> in the information for this video. Yeah, that's. I think that's about it. Can you think of anything else we should talk about? You can like. Uh talk about the US life uh, that you, uh, like <laughs> the journey about P or yeah, you have definitely talked about that in your previous videos but mm -hmm. that's it I don't think any of anything yeah. else so I think I have a slight obsessive compulsive not say disorder but personality okay. so we're going on 58 minutes and 53 seconds mm -hmm. I really want this to be under 60 seconds or 60 minutes 60, oh, so, so we have, yeah we, we have, have a minute more. left uh, yes. it, it's totally arbitrary it's useless but <laughs> I just for me I, I think that way yeah and so I guess I'm just gonna say some parting words first off Ketul thank you very much for coming on the podcast it was my pleasure absolutely are you cold you're so cold yeah I know. why are you cold <laughs> I get cold. oh man it's so warm here <laughs> uh, but anyway so Hopefully you guys got something out of that. We're definitely expanding the audience. We're not just going PA anymore. We're going health. We're going medicine. In medicine. medicine I'm, I'm talking US. about my car. Like the channel is going to expand into different topics. But I really do want to start talking to anybody I meet that's interesting and can help a lot of people in whatever field it might be. You know, so saw an opportunity. Yeah, uh, it was my pleasure. I was say. Did. Yeah. Likewise, this was very interesting. I learned a lot. Thank you. So hopefully y'all appreciated that. Like I said, any questions for Ketul, the information for his email is going to be in for information for this video. You can uh, post a comment on the video. I'll see if I can relay it to him, but it will be easiest to just get in touch with him yeah. personally. So anyway, guys, I'm Boris. I'm a physician assistant. This is Dr. Ketul Barot. <laughs> signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed that. See you in the next video. Yeah. Oh, God, an hour and two seconds. <laughs>